and we are done hi besties welcome to i grew it with your hostess with the blogs to me but i get hey besties today i want to share something with you about protecting your passwords keeping them safe now the less people know about your personal information, passwords, etc., the less they'll have access to your life and your money. So we need to learn and take measures we want to protect our information. Yo, Mara, sometimes these scammers, they can get your details just like that. Just like it happened with ad scammed at first sight. Ish, let's have a listen. Ish to me. <sighs> They really got me this time. I received an email from my bank to check my online account as there was some fraudulent activity. I was shocked and clicked on the link that was in my email. It took me to my online account and needed my password. I didn't think this was odd because the website looked legit. I put in my password. Next thing, the screen went blank. Next thing, I received an SMS that my money was taken out of my account. I called my bank and they said that I got fished. I didn't even know that a fish could take my money. I need you to assist to stop this fish from taking my money. Time to go and see the plug, eh? Guys, in his, I'm so ready for this conversation. <laughs> Got it unlocked. Wow. Pedantic, I see. Hey, we've got our plug, Lebohang. Hey, Le. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lebohang, when I Googled you, Neb, yeah. Gibono for you. Uh, one of Mail and Guardian's top 200 young people to take out to lunch. So this lunch situation, how is it that I also saw terms like regulatory and compliance and financial crime right there next to your name? And sure, hi, the things you do to me. I'm actually <laughs> glad that I'm Googleable. I'm actually surprised. <laughs> I'm actually an internal auditor by profession, eh? Believe oh. it or not. I navigated my life through compliance, um, did my postgrad in compliance. I worked a lot with the regulator as well. That's where I learned a lot about financial crime. And currently at APSA, I'm a financial crime assurance person. So that's why we're here. That's why I was Googleable. Huh? <laughs> so you've got the right person, because for some Certainly. of us, for some of us, those words are big words, bo regulatory, bo compliance. Yeah. So I'm hoping you can break it down to us. Like my first question yeah. is what is financial crime? Yeah. And it sounds like a term that is way too big, right? Yeah. I mean, theoretically, people will mention it as an economic um, crime scheme, the washing of money, white collar crime. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was called previously as well. So financial crime essentially to me is um, just criminal activities where usually they use financial institutions as a vehicle, right? So you'll find things like money laundering, the washing of money, there's illicit money that comes into the inst institution just to be washed, yeah. Bribery and corruption, that's where it comes from as well. But what's important more about financial crime to me is to know the predicate offenses. So around financial crime, you've got stuff such as fraud, misrepresentation of, um, of, of, of information. You've got cyber crime as well, where people steal your personal information. So in essence, it's essentially just the financial crimes or activities that happen um, in the background, targeting financial institutions or using financial institutions and targeting customers like you and I. Sure. So, you know, we want to show people, even as we know how to use technology, ne? Yeah, but yeah. now I'm feeling like you're going, you can't trust your bank. Or you can trust your bank, but people can use your bank to get your mind, right? So now I must be strict with my personal information, if I understand you correctly. It's, it's actually a bit um, difficult in that as banks, we do require your personal information in order to do some due diligence, you know? So there's two sides to it. For us, we need to make sure that we know exactly who we're dealing with. Right. So we do what we call customer due diligence, where we literally conduct your due, due diligence on you. We use um, certain terms like knowing your customers, your KYC, you might have heard about it. You know when the banks call you and they're like, we want your ID. Yes. We want your, yes, that's what we're trying to do to know exactly who to me is, you know? And uh, yeah, but that's personal information. Yeah, that's but at what the I same time, to ask you. Exactly. Like, you're yeah. saying protect your personal information, yeah. but you're also saying don't give out your personal information yeah. to stay safe. 
You know when you're doing your credit checks and sometimes you find already there's a Dolce & Gabbana that was bought? Yes. They have absolutely no idea where that came from. You need to have those alerts to me. As and when there's a credit that's taken on your name, you need to have those email alerts just to make sure that you know exactly what's happening in that. Um, what, what people usually don't do around their personal information as well is doing just regular normal checks, like checking their bank statements just to see what money went out, transactional doing their own transactional monitoring, you know, just checking exactly where money comes from or money is going out as well, because people could actually be using your information fraudulently and now and now you have absolutely no idea. So we must work as hard as the criminals, actually. In essence. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, avoiding scams sounds like a lot of work, right? Like, at scammed at first, also unfortunately clicked a link and got fished. But now I'm confused because I'm like, how? Me, I did biology. I'd never learned about fish stealing from us. I didn't even know fishes know how to get into the bank. <laughs> how does that work? Oh my goodness, the term fishing. Um, a lot of people use it. I mean, obviously it's pronounced as fishing as in you can yeah, fish. Fishing. Yeah, you're fishing. <laughs> so what fraudsters usually do, they go out and manipulate you. We know we want money. We know we want, you know, to get um, some awards out there or gifts out there. So what fraudsters usually do, they use the social engineering. They know very well that, look at uh, during SARS time when people want returns, right? People know that, you know, I've, I've, I've submitted my return, but I'm hoping there's money. Then that's where they leverage off such things. So phishing essentially is the manipulation where fraudsters manipulate their, uh, or use those skillful tactics just to make sure that they get as much information as possible. Where now when you click on that link to me, that's when you actually find that it goes to a fraudulent or, f um, or fake website and kaboom, your money's gone from there. Marilevo, listen, I yeah. hear you, but how do we know what's real and what's fake? Because you know, when they shy shy us, like yeah. you will see your bank's name on the on the email or even in the SMS, that number would look like that number you usually see when apps are messages you. Yeah, yeah. So how do I know what's real and what's fake? Yeah, yeah. So so I mean from a banking perspective, you ought to know that a responsible institution would never send anything through email or SMS, something that is supposed to be on online, for instance, right? Okay. You've got your banking app, for instance. There is a two-time authenticator that you can look for, out for as well. So you know that, um, first of all, you need to know the professionalism or how banks work in this instance. Very responsible. And there is education around it as well as to how to look out for those emails if, if they are fraudulent. But also, I mean, simple things. When you get an email and you can see there's like a typing error, for instance, uh, yeah. or you can see that it's supposed to be a .co.za instead of a .com, you need to be vigilant. So my point here is that you need to be doing your due diligence as well. Um. Yes, as much as they're fishing, you need to be always alert in looking out for those anomalies that usually would not be, you know, if it doesn't look right, it certainly is not right to me. Sure. Yeah, it's a lot, eh? Yeah. These guys don't rest. Never. My goodness. Now, besides them taking our informational, like our personal information, like the ID number, home address, everybody contact details, what else must we not do? Because I'm getting it, don't click. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 definitely do not click. So you read, do not click. And definitely, you know, there's nothing wrong with going the extra mile to me. If you're seeing something and you really want to just double check if it's come, pick up the phone and call, you know, call your bank. I mean, if you're, if you're a private banker, you know, you can get to private banking, get your private banker just to see, is this actually real? Call customer services, ask them, is this actually real? Am I being um, used perhaps in instances for, for phishing um, tactics or so? And it's also essential as well just to, um, oh, passwords, not just on clicking. Do me, you can't use sticky notes for passwords and put it on your table. That cannot work. Keep it in here. Keep it in here. Right. So you, absolutely. So, so those are some of the tactics that you need to be looking out for. The link and the password as well. Just be vigilant. You are saying, if I'm not sure, and they say, hey, I'm from the bank, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to phone you back at the bank. Hang up 
and I must phone the bank myself and say, yeah, you're phoning me about this. And no, no, no. I, and and it, it sounds ridi- ridiculous, but mm. literally, this is your money that we're talking That's about. Certainly do that. But like I said, there are certain um, technological um, factors that you can use, like your two-time factor as yes. well, making sure that, you know, there's a password that you can click on before Correct. processing any particular payment. If you paid for this and you said you paid for this, you need to double check yourself before um, before you even make those calls. Lebu is very strict, guys. <laughs> She's saying you must take care of yourself. Work as hard as those totties. Well, there you have it, besties. Oh, not today, scammer. Blogger. Blogger. Uh, well done. At least can I let impact the nyana more in our Imagine about to well. They say the devil doesn't rest. And no. Met a scammer. Absolutely not. You My did well. Goodness. Well done. <laughs> Find out how to protect your money and rewrite the story of your finances with I Grew It. Absa, your story matters.